Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. Um, I have a series of videos that are notes on the Martian bacterial colonists of Earth. Uh, they're, they're rough notes and I'm going to be writing up later in sections information about various um, topics that are discussed helter-skelter in these notes. I thought in the interest of time it might be best to put them out right now and so please uh, please excuse the the sketchiness of these notes they're just first impressions and I'm pretty sure there'll be much more to come either from me or from other people I have more to talk to you about about this far-fetched notion of Martian colonists inside the space stations that are human beings' bodies. So this is how the com communication has been proceeding. And uh, I myself am somewhat skeptical, but I'm willing to relay this information in case it's useful to other people. So they say that, that the Martians are telepaths, that humans are not, but Martians are, and that they achieve this telepathy by making mental suggestions to the gut brain uh, with regard to sexual sexual attraction, so that they will, so that the people will become attracted to each other and uh, connected to each other, and that when these connections uh, on the astral plane, I assume, occur, that then they can carry on communication. The Martian colonists can carry on communication with each other through the higher centers such as the third eye point and this apparently is the way it has been for a long time of course now everybody's waking up and so what we're doing is somewhat preempting uh, what they consider to be their command position at our at our space stations so here's more of the story um, it seems that the Martians are uh, genetic bioengineers and also um, and also specialists in miniaturization and they are the the group that's here on earth are space explorers from Mars and uh, they their initial form was bipedal they say like us and um, there grew to be too many of them. And so they had to miniaturize and they, many of them colonized human bodies. They have a way of saying that, uh, that the bipedal form is within the, the bacterial like capsule and uh, it capable, I assume, of being released at a future date, especially were they able to get back to Mars, which they feel is, is within our capability to provide them this is their wish uh, to get back to Mars. Um, so I had a side conversation about the number that came here initially. And, and at first they said that was 25, but they said that I had, I had killed one. This story varied somewhat, quite a bit in fact. He said, I killed one, that left 24, which is odd because um, there are 12 strands of DNA, uh, which is twice 24, in the ascended or awakened human being. Now, just assume for a minute that the Martians may be the genetic engineers, bioengineers, who... Uh, developed the human DNA and maintain it according to the standards of of the lyre and spinners of the of the star song that creates the the DNA template. Maybe maybe the Martian uh, colonists are are those who create and maintain the DNA that's that the humans use. Then if there were twenty five or 24 with one to spare initially uh, when the plan was made to create the human being 
then uh, that would explain that there are really only 24 individuals right now who would like to go back to Mars. Uh, I don't know if this can be arranged. Uh, I know that there are those who, who can create, um, you know, wormholes and vortices and so forth for space travel. Uh, but I don't know what conditions are like on on Mars or how overcrowded it may be with Martians. I don't know if conditions sustain life on Mars right now for the bipedal form of that this species would like to revert to. Uh, one thing interesting that they said today, of course there have been many things said and some of it has been somewhat debatable or changeable. Um, one thing that they said is that we humans were their bipedal, like, uh, virtual bipedal being. So there would be uh, like a gazillion bacteria in one of these human beings and through telepathy they're able to like virtually become the bipedal form again. Or maybe more than virtually, they may consider that they are this being this um, bioengineered being, uh, which might be something that needs to be ironed out in the future. I can see a great moment right now for the, the meta prayer of the Buddhists, because they believe in happiness and plenty to eat and so forth for all beings everywhere, the well-being of all beings. And uh, if this human form is like the um, way station of any number of sentient beings, you were going to need to develop an attitude of gratitude and harmony and unity with all these beings in such a way that I say, I, I would hold it uh, from the stance of my, my body of light, which is pretty homogenous and mine alone, I hope. And then I would look down on the fourth dimension and the third dimension from that higher point of view. And I would see there the, the interweaving of life and of uh, uh, rhythms and um, uh, rhythms of various sentient species into in, in one form, such as this form, in many forms, uh, and in uh, and the interweaving of, of energies, you know, within these forms, many different types of energies within these, these forms. And so, so setting that aside as, as a possible saving mechanism so that we can rise above the, the difficulties we may encounter because uh, we, we have thought of ourselves, we have thought of these bodies as ours and ours alone, our kingdom, our domain, right? Queendom in my case. But, but in fact, apparently, this is far from the truth. We're like a great tree that houses many different beings, you know. Many beings call it home, like a giant oak tree or a giant um, pine tree, a sequoia, maybe. Uh, so, so we are that, and we are like co-sentiently responsible for the maintenance of this environment, this habitat that we call the human form. You know, the Martians, one sentient form that inhabits our, our body, they, they think that they have a soul and they think that we don't. They think we are a machine, which is interesting because their size is so very, very miniaturized, so very tiny with, with respect to ours. You know, it's easy for them to think of us as turf or real estate or like not really something, right? In the same way that we think of planet Earth in that regard. Planet Earth is so vast, so giant, you know. It's hard for us to know that she also is a sentient being and the sun is a great sentient being too. It's the same kind of order of magnitude, I guess. Size problem. So, I'm suggesting that as we view the Martian, like, worldview, uh, um, religion as it were, um, social memory complex, we try to take into consideration the blending of the, the unconscious, like thought forms, 
of the Martians and of the humans and who knows however how many other uh, intelligent and sometimes sentient races, uh, species that that are here on Earth in the third and fourth dimension, how the unconscious minds of all these is 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 tied together in like skeins and tangles and like that. You see, each influencing the other, no matter they are different species from a different planet, no matter. So, so it could be that in the long age of darkness, that 10,000 year hiatus, uh, that the myth, mythological basis, the stories that, that make the creations uh, construct of each species have become somewhat distorted. The light has become distorted. And so when the Martians say that they have souls and we do not, and when we say that we have souls and they do not, then uh, we may find room to compromise there and understand that we each deserve that ensouled respect. You know, at the same time, avidly exploring the social memory complex of the other uh, species and races. Uh, in the same way, the notion of control, which was, I believe, originally Martian. Uh, I believe the original Martian civilization was very uh, territorial aggressive and uh, and uh, just in general aggressive. And uh, this may have like flowed through to our own mythos, our human mythos in terms of war uh, being waged, Cain against Abel and all that down through the ages. So these these various... Uh, trends of the initial social memory complexes in each case may have become uh, it may have sh become shaded by the mythos of other races and in, in, in this melting pot here on earth so so we need to look at that how each species uh, social memory complex has influenced the others during the actually the last 100,000 years, the Great Age. Uh, let's see what else. There was so much. There is a story that I may have avoided telling a couple of years ago because it spooked me. I'll put that in another, in another video. It has to do with um, miniaturization of the demons and negative, astral negative beings that were allies that, uh, until quite recently, of the Martians here on Earth in colonizing humankind. But, 